Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. You make me un poco loco, un poquititito loco, the way you keep me guessing, I'm nodding and I'm guessing. Pixar's latest feature film, Coco, is a visually dazzling, heartwarming, and utterly charming adventure set in a fascinating and incredibly detailed world with its own unique rules, which is populated by rich, lovable characters that work their way effortlessly into your heart, making you laugh and cry in seemingly equal measure and often at the same time. Now, you see that? What I just said right there? If I were to say that about a film by any other studio, you'd be forgiven for thinking that film was the jewel in that studio's crown. But when it comes to Pixar, well, that's just the norm, isn't it? I mean, honestly, go back and listen. That description could fit just about any of Pixar's films. Now, I was charmed by Coco from its opening second to the moment that I was released out into the street as a blubbering mess. And, and you know what? It, it kind of sucks to say this. But I kind of expected that. There is so much joy in experiencing a film as overwhelmingly entertaining as Coco, but I gotta tell you that when the Pixar logo appears before it, I gotta say that there's no surprise in it. All I can say really is, Pixar has done it again. That thing that Pixar does better than any other studio, they went and did it again. But here's something that Pixar hasn't done before, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong about this in the comments as well, but I believe this is Pixar's first musical. I mean, sure, there have been Pixar movies with songs in them and musical montages and things, but this may be the very first Pixar film where the characters break into song, even if it is all contextually appropriate because they're doing it like on stage or in front of an audience or something. And also it's appropriate because this movie follows the journey of a young man named Miguel who really, really wants to be a musician despite the fact that his family has banned music for generations. Now, how and why music was banned in Miguel's family, I will leave to you to discover. But I should talk about how deftly Coco subverts your expectations, using its footloose premise to trick you into thinking that this is a movie about believing in yourself, and seizing your moment, and going after what you really want no matter who stands in your way and all that stuff. There are plenty of movies about that kind of stuff, but slowly but surely, Coco shifts and changes to become about something else entirely. There is a turn in this movie, a twist if you will, and I have to say, I didn't see it coming. Looking back, I should have seen it coming. I know cinematic tropes, especially in kids' films, and I should have seen it coming. This movie always plays fair with you. It just plays on your assumptions, and it lets those assumptions misdirect you while it tells the story that it really, really wants to tell, without you really noticing what it's doing. Now that is a testament to the storytelling, the character development, and the rich world building that I simply followed the characters and never really noticed where the story was really heading. Because where this story heads is to some pretty jaw-dropping places. Due to a combination of circumstances, little Miguel finds himself trapped in the land of the dead on the Dia de los Muertos, the one day of the year when the dead can visit the living. And that setting is not only gorgeous to behold, it's filled with a vast universe of well-realized sets, characters, and little rules of the road which are immediately engaging. Miguel's journey home is filled with wonder and heart and some very evocative Latin-style music from a group of songwriters that includes the movie's co-director and the husband and wife team that wrote the songs for Frozen. There are also laughs galore, and although the movie deals with the subject of death, it's in a very, very accessible way that is palatable for children. That being said, just about the last third of this film will... Oh, okay, yeah. It, it just destroyed me. Destroyed me! There's no other way to put it. I knew it was gonna destroy me, and the darn thing did it anyway. Did I cry? Yeah, yeah, I cried. I'll admit it. And I'm, I'm not talking about some little single tear down the cheek either. I'm talking about big, sobbing, ugly face cries. With... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That kind of crying. I award Coco an extra large bag of popcorn. Guys, guys, seriously, this one is just good for the soul. Uh, no pun intended. With Coco, Pixar delivers a work of art that stands among its very best. To say that this one is standard Pixar at this point would be to ignore just how incredibly high that standard has become. But don't just take my word for it. Let's hear from the target market. Was it too scary? Was it too spooky? Did it deal too much with death? Lila? No. What would you give Coco, Lila? Um, and, and did you feel that it was too spooky? Too scary? No. Did the skeletons really creep you out? No. All right, well, extra large bag of popcorn. Let's get another kid in here. And what's your name, young man? Maverick. All right, Maverick. Was Coco too scary for you? Nope. 
What did you think of the music in Coco? I think it was awesome. All right, so what would you give Coco on a scale of small bag of popcorn to extra large bag of popcorn? I'd give him an extra large bag of popcorn. You heard it, not just from the Colonel, but from kids as well. Extra large all around. Go see Coco this Thanksgiving weekend. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Coco in the comments as well. Did you, did you cry? Did you cry like a little baby girl that ran out of ice cream? And, and, and can anyone tell me of a Pixar movie in which the characters break into song? How about your favorite Pixar movie? Jump into the comments and let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and our love for each other will live on forever in every beat of my proud Corazon.